Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are covering slowly changing dimensions. Let's establish what slowly changing dimensions are. In a data warehouse parts of a dimension table can change over time. And this process is called slowly changing dimension. We may notice that some column values change over time, such as employee and customer names, titles and or address. Managing these slowly changing dimensions is crucial to maintaining the accuracy of our data. There are three types of SCD that are common in a data warehouse type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 2 is frequently used in a data warehouse and it maintains the history of the data. This is also a complex one to maintain. We will cover SCD type 2 using DLT. Let's briefly cover the three types. Type 1 destroys the history of a particular field. We simply overwrite the existing row to bring in the current value. This means records and the dimension table always reflect the current state and no historical data is maintained. We have seen this in action with the truncate and load approach. We have covered this data load method on this channel. This is easy to maintain. Type 2 maintains data history. We keep the original row when a dimension change occurs. In addition, we add a new row in the dimension table with updated attributes values. A minimum of two to three additional columns are added to the dimension. Number one, row effective date. Number two, row expiration date. Number three, current row indicator. We can infer from the row expiration date the current row. This helps us distinguish between the historical and the current row. In type 3 slowly changing dimension, we add a new column to the dimension table. This column stores the current value. This is SCD is sometimes called an alternate reality. We can view current and historical information via different columns. There are about seven variations of the slowly changing dimensions, but these three are the common ones. Maintaining the slowly changing dimension requires a thoughtful approach to data integration, update strategies, and dimension management to ensure seamless data integration. Fortunately for us, the DLT framework has added functionality to manage the type 2 slowly changing dimension. It only requires simple configurations. Let's open the DLT project and we create a new file for this. This pipeline extracts data from SQL Server and loads it to Postgres. This follows the similar design pattern of a DLT pipeline. We create a DLT pipeline and provide it the destination database and the schema. If you are new to DLT, then watch the previous videos on DLT to get up to speed. Anyways, we use the SQL table from the verified source, pass it the table name, and then define the schema. Schema is optional. The SCD configurations are defined in the run function. We provide the table we are processing and to the right disposition, we provide the disposition type of merge and strategy is set to SCD2. We also provide the primary key column and the destination table name. This is all the configuration required for the slowly changing dimension type 2. DLT takes away the complexity from this process. We call the load SCD dim function with the table name and primary key column. This way we can reuse the function for various tables that require SCD2 handling. Let's save our file and give this a try. Let's run our DLT pipeline. The pipeline is running. Once completed successfully, it will create a product table in the snapshot schema. Let's refresh the database and expand the snapshot schema. We can query the product table to see the source columns as well as the DLT generated columns. When we run the first time, everything gets updated and we can see when it's valid from and if any row has changed, it will have two entries. Now let's update a few rows in our source table and see how DLT handles the new version of an existing record. We are using the following table from the SQL Server AdventureWorks database. It is based on the product table. We select a few columns from it. 
we are updating the product color for the product ID one. This statement will update the color column. We can query the table to make sure the column value is updated. Let's now run the DLT pipeline again. We expect to see two rows for the product ID one. Here we have both records in our table, a current row and historical row. DLT expires the existing row and inserts a new row with the valid date set to null. We have both records and thus we can see the history of the product. SCD2 preserves the history and allows for accurate historical analysis and reporting. We can update another record to see this in action. I will update another product row in the source table. Let's run the DLT pipeline once again and review what updates we have in the destination table. It should be similar to as before with an additional row. We have two different rows with the same ID, a historical and a current row. For the current row, the DLT valid to date column is null. This gives us the recent version of the record. There we have it. The SCD type 2 handling is automated. We can see the current view of the data as well as the history. DLT makes maintaining the slowly changing dimension fairly straightforward. Normally this takes careful planning and custom code, but DLT makes this a breeze. We can analyze our data with the current view as well as we can see the historical lens. All we need to do is pass a date that is between the valid from date and valid to date and we view the different versions of the product. We can apply this technique to any table where we need to store history. Hopefully this provides a good understanding of what the SCD type 2 is and how to use it in a DLT project. Like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.